Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about pushbacks. This is a field drill, right? And for those of you who have ever pitched, you know that um, a lot of what you do in instruction, uh, or a lot of what is received in instruction, uh, is, is difficult um, for a pitcher to understand unless there's a feel associated with it. Um, the goal of this drill is, is twofold, um, in that it uh, creates a feel of a forceful drive, uh, one that they can try and replicate during their full pitch. And then it also helps a uh, pitcher feel what it's like to have a good overlapping sequence uh, during their backswing. And we'll, we'll talk about those here in just a second. But let's go ahead and take a look at the setup of this pitcher. As you can see, all of her weight is just how I like it. It's distributed over her drive foot. Um, you can see that her stride foot here is up on what I call point. Uh, it's not bearing any weight. Of critical importance as well is the fact that this pitcher is utilizing all six inches of the plate. As you'll see, her drive foot is in contact with the very edge of the front of the plate, and her stride foot is in contact with the very back of the plate. That is full utilization of six inches. It's beautiful. The other thing that she does extremely well that you probably can't see in this particular video is she's using the entire width of the plate. Okay. Um, from here, it's important to know that the name of the drill uh, is also the primary instruction. Uh, meaning that when the rearward foot, the stride foot, takes a step back, I want her to feel that that foot, when it contacts the ground, is pushing back against the ground. Okay, And with that instruction, she'll create the same feel um, here with her drive foot, in that as soon as it contacts the rubber, she's been instructed to push back. In order to accomplish this effectively, and to create the resistance that she needs to have that pushed back feeling, it is imperative that you tell the pitcher not to allow their heels to sink. Okay? As you can note here, her stride foot becomes a very rigid lever very quickly, uh, and that heel is not allowed to sink. You'll see that her drive foot will do the exact same thing. It is not The heel is not allowed to sink, and it's a very rigid lever as soon as it contacts the front of the plate. Okay? Um, the goal, the primary goal of this drill, is to train the athlete to develop such a powerful push that by the time they reach 3 o'clock, and this is what I would call a 3 o'clock position here where the arm is out in front, um, that the very next move beyond that is detachment from the pitching plate itself. And if you take a look here, you'll see that the foot is no longer connected to the plate. The push was so powerful uh, that she is removed from the plate. One of the things that this does for those of you that have followed some of the instructions that I've given online um, is that it helps an athlete perform what is known as a weightless move, um, which is an inward turn of the foot. You can see it here. If you look at the actual um, stride foot, you'll see that it moves inward here. Okay, And that happens as the foot detaches. It happens most efficiently if the foot can detach from the rubber. And it happens most efficiently, I should say, as well, when this happens uh, prior to 3 o'clock. Let's go ahead and take a look at the full video. Alright, I'm just going to let this loop through a few times so that you can get a feel of what the pitcher is supposed to do during this drill. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, talk about the second um, part of this drill uh, that I like to address, which is uh, the timing of a pitch. Uh, specifically, uh, the first series of timing events that take place during the backswing. Um, in previous videos, I discussed this as well, but the concept is pretty simple. What we want is we want to establish uh, forward momentum with the upper body. We want the upper body headed in this direction, while the arm um, backswings in that direction. Those opposing directions, that opposing force, um, creates a feel for a pitcher. And for those of you that have thrown the ball before, you'll know what I mean. Uh, a feel of being rushed. Okay, So um, that rushed backswing feeling is indeed because the upper body is moving forward through space as the rear arm is traveling rearward. Those opposing directions will actually create what many people um, have observed. It will create a straightening of the torso. You can see her, her hips sort of uh, thrust forward through space. So that is the goal of, of doing this. Now to actually create that, what we want is we want the pitcher's rear foot or stride foot to be traveling rearward. So to assist in this, the best instruction for this drill is to have 
the pitcher's glove moving in a direction that is opposite her stride leg. So I want her glove moving out away from her body as her stride leg moves rearward. Okay, and it looks very similar to this. This is exactly what it should be. Glove moving away from the body as the, arm, as the stride leg moves rearward. These are opposing directions, and the purpose of this is to delay the beginning of her backswing. And I don't want her backswing starting until she has a resisted, uh, resistive uh, backside, meaning that she's completed this rearward move. Uh, her stride leg is resistive, it's tense, it's a rigid lever and can allow her drive leg to do some work. So now, as you'll see, I have her body moving forward through space as her arm is moving rearward. If she just started here and went right into a backswing, um, she wouldn't have that opposing direction. She wouldn't have that overlap uh, feel, and she'd have a real hard time uh, with the timing of her pitch. Okay, because what it creates, having this first overlap sequence, allows for the pitcher to reach this point here in the pitch uh, in the most efficient manner. And what that means is that by the time the arm is at 3 o'clock, the direction of the arm from this point is upward. Okay, And if her timing is correct, the direction of her stride foot will be downward. If you note here, um, her stride foot is at the level of these doors in the background here. And the very next move, as you can see, is downward, meaning her stride leg, she's falling through space as her arm is raising. And what that'll do is it'll create a wonderful uh, elliptical shape over the top of her circle, what many people refer to as a corner, okay, as opposed to a very long sweeping uh, arc type circle. You don't want a giant circle. It's sort of a bad name for the arm motion because uh, high-level pitchers don't really draw a circle. They have a very elliptical uh, top corner and if they whip properly have a very elliptical bottom corner. Okay, so to help you guys see um, better see what it is that I'm trying to create uh, with uh, pictures uh, using the pushback, uh, a good example of that would be utilizing video of Yukiko uh, Yuno, who has a very, very powerful uh, sprinter's position formed. Uh, and as you can see here, as she comes off that plate, you can see um, a detachment that takes place uh, at actually a little before 3 o'clock. You can see that her energy uh, is directed on getting off of the plate. It's not just simply swinging her stride leg out. Uh, she has a very powerful drive. She has a very good study. Uh, for those of you interested in, in replicating uh, really decent drive mechanics. You can see here she has a uh, body moving forward through space as her arm is traveling rearward, uh, which allows her hips to straighten, to thrust forward. Okay, You can see here that her legs are fully engaged and into the pitch. And you can see here that by 3 o'clock, um, she is starting to descend down into the pitch so, so she can create this nice whip over the top. Okay, Again, huge thing here with Yukiko is that she detaches from the plate very early because her force off of the rubber is so powerful. Okay, I want to make uh, one uh, quick note here uh, regarding Yukiko. Um, some may point out that she utilizes more of a roll. Uh, roll type start as opposed to uh, what I have been trying to uh, push uh, which is a uh, four foot strike against the front of the rubber. Um, it has the appearance very much so of a roll but if you closely watch the foot um, she truly is not bearing any weight on that foot throughout this point. It's kind of free to slide around and rotate uh, and if you really look at when the push happens it happens right here you can see how much she toes out and you can see her foot travel down or backward and down um, in that pawing motion. You can also see that when she pushes from the plate she does so with a f uh, her planter with a planter flexed foot uh, with her heel raised and using entirely forefoot pressure uh, to actually forcefully drive off the rubber. So what may appear to some at first glance as a rolling start uh, and closer inspection um, is truthfully let me move this down into uh, perspective here for you real quick, is truly a push in and back. Okay, so in a backward and down motion against the plate. Uh, this particular picture is Blair Luna. 
Uh, and I've always felt that she had a very, very powerful drive off the plate. And if we go ahead and take a look at what she's accomplishing here, you can see that her body is moving forward through space as her arm travels rearward uh, marvelously. All right, and you can see her hips straighten as a result of that. Her pelvis sort of flare out. And you can see here that her uh, drive foot is completely flexed, and she's pushing from the ball of her foot. And you can see here that her drive was so powerful that before 3 o'clock, the very next move here at 1, she has completely removed herself uh, from the plate. The plate is actually back here. Okay, so um, a great example of what a powerful drive can do. You can really see the inward move, obviously, uh, that happens when you have detached yourself from the plate. It is very difficult to perform this weightless inward move uh, that helps allow the hips and the shoulders open early uh, if you are still standing on the plate. Uh, so again, that's our focus of uh, performing this drill. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at another one of my favorites, uh, Monica Abbott. Uh, Monica uh, has, as some of you have made in comment and in the past, a pretty deep bend at the waist uh, to start her motion. And in order for her hips to straighten uh, and to set a good posture uh, as she begins her drive, you can see that the way that that's actually accomplished is that her body's heading forward through space as her arm travels rearward. That allows those opposing motions allow her spine to straighten. And you can also see that um, she very much so lifts her dry foot and uses an inward, a down and back motion into the front of the plate. You can also see that as she does that, that the heel of her dry foot does not sink at all. It is a very firm and resistive lever. From here, <coughs> she has completely energized her legs, and at this point you'll see that the foot is leaving its push point uh, as she reaches 3 o'clock. You can also see that her foot, her stride leg, is descending as her upper arm continues. Uh, that is that second overlapping point uh, that we mentioned earlier. Okay, very, very powerful pitcher, a very successful pitcher, uh, and uh, an incredible study as well. Okay, last but not least, by any means, uh, is Kat Osterman. Um, Kat has actually a, a very, very powerful drive as well. I, again, uh, we're going to look at what we're trying to do here in the pushbacks. We're trying to create forward momentum as the arm travels rearward. You can see her doing that marvelously. You can see that as she does that, that allows her f hips to flare forward. That first point of overlap cannot be overemphasized. It's very important. Okay, and you can also see that as she pushes from the plate, she's not doing uh, so with a rocking motion. She's doing so with a flexed plantar flexed foot uh, and with a forefoot strike against the plate. Uh, her foot is very resistive at this point, and watch the raw energy at which she comes out at. And by the time that she reaches three, right here, the next move is detachment from the plate. Watch her stride foot leave the plate. Okay, a lot of people think that uh, Cat has a bit of a crow hop. I would totally disagree with that. Uh, in my opinion, a crow hop is one where the heel sinks and replants and pushes, not where the toe performs a little pivot, uh, which is really what Cat's doing there. Okay, so um, very very powerful drive sequence here, and obviously a very successful uh, high level pitcher. Again, I'm not just taking who I feel are great pitchers. I'm taking to those that I feel have very powerful drive mechanics. Uh, and uh, CAT is an excellent study uh, in, in regards to that. Okay, the last thing that I, I want to go over with everyone here is that when uh, given a drill, uh, what I like to see in students is that they take that drill, uh, make it their own, and uh, really juice it up once they've learned to perform the motions correctly. Uh, a great example of that would be uh, the drills, uh, the progressive drills that uh, board member has posted for us in the past. Uh, and that you know you can perform the nine o'clock drill uh, to your heart's content. But once you've mastered that motion, in my mind, it's very beneficial uh, to learn to perform that motion uh, with some raw speed and power. Uh, and this is a great example. So this is one, the same picture. One week later, uh, she came back to clinic, and she took the pushback drill. And you can see uh, how powerful uh, she turned this drill into. So I'm going to go ahead and loop this so you guys can see the raw power um, that happens when you decide to take a drill and turn up the volume from say 10 to 20. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a quick look at this here as she comes through. All right, you can see a, a huge amount of resistive force in her rear step. Actually, if you could see her feet uh, completely in this, you would see that she's actually completely airborne. Uh, I think anyone that looks at this can see that her backswing is very rushed. Okay, and that her arms go way away from her body. 
and she resists on a very firm surface and sprints off that plate. Uh, detachment is completed here. She is completely off the plate at th by th after 3 o'clock. And you can see that the inward move of her hips can actually take place now, this unweighted move, because she's no longer on the plate. Um, this is a great example of a phenomenal picture that I work with. Um, and just super excited to see that she came uh, to clinic uh, with this level of, uh, of energy uh, into it. So let's take a look one last time here. So once you've perfected the movements of the pushback drill, I do recommend that uh, you make it a much more aggressive and ballistic feeling drill. Uh, and the only way to do that is to take it and really juice it up. Um, so there you go.